Just a quick update, um, just to show that I've built uh, a second uh, one of these um, compost heated greenhouse cloches. Um, so I've made these to suit the greenhouse, uh, or the, the compost bin rather, so that are run about um, just over a meter wide and about 400 millimeters deep. Um, the cloche, the, the lower part of the, uh, the little mini greenhouse is um, 300 millimeters, and then I've got the the cloche which uh, forms the, the kind of roof structure which sits on top on these little aluminium clips. Um, I've had, added um, diagonal bracing on these, um, it's not actually needed as they're, they're, they're glazed anyhow, but what I've done here is I've got the two, two greenhouses here and then I've taken out the, in, um, the internal kind of uh, glazing so it's kind of knocked through, so it's all one open span inside. Um, just having some thoughts about these, um, I'm using um, 25 millimeter um, by 25 equal angle al aluminium angle, and its uh, thickness is 1.5 millimeters or wall thickness. So it's quite um, light duty aluminium, but because uh, the glazing in these is a uh, five and six millimeter acrylic, it's it's very really, very very solid indeed. But um, it's quite nice because the aluminium is quite lightweight, so they're quite easy to transport. And move around and because I've got these on top of a, a compost um, bin when I need to access material I, I just lift these up and I've got these stainless steel handles inset handles there so you can lift up the whole structure obviously you want to take the plants out first on the, the seed trays and move those but uh, the aluminium it comes in a, I bought it from tool station it's um, in a pack of three and it's about 25.99 for the um, three eight foot lengths and the dimensions of this, because the, the, the length is about a metre, just uh, um, 10, 30 millimetres, um, and then it's, I think it's 420 wide. So it works out, you just need one pack of 25, uh, 4, 25, 99 to, to make all the aluminium frame for these. It uses up a bit more material because um, obviously in between each span you've got the, it's basically doubled up, but I quite like having these as separate units because if you want to change the configuration or use these as separate little greenhouses or cloches on the allotment or move them round or change the conditions, move them into the shade or put them into a sunnier area to, to regulate temperature and things like that, it gives you the ultimate sort of flexibility. But having a thought about this, um, what would work well, I, I think um, a two bay compost bin, an insulated compost bin, overall dimensions, um, uh, well, eight foot by four foot, um, divided into these with these uh, cloches on top you could have dimensions of um, well four foot by two foot for each mini greenhouse with the, the corresponding kind of lid scaled up to, to suit that span and then sliding doors on each end which give you access to, to the whole area and in terms of propagating and growing I, I think that would be really really good um, this one's only 300. I wanted it fairly low just to keep it fairly compact and reduce the amount of material. But I think if I was making um, a larger one, I think um, making those two foot by, well, each end panel two foot square, that would give you an amazing space inside. So it would basically be like an eight foot by four foot greenhouse, but very, very minimal cost. And if you can find the uh, repurposed acrylic sheet, then that's a real steal really because uh, it's just the cost of the acrylic on its own is, is quite a, an investment really but the overall cost of this um, is about 25 99 for the aluminium the, the one at the front was a reclaimed um, cloche so I, I, that gave me the idea of, of building this in the first place and then some nuts and bolts and washers and then some cloche clips and the cloche clips are about two pounds each um, I used aluminium greenhouse screws um, I used the, the screws from the cloche but I think they're about eight pounds for 50 or something like that so it's very very cheap and then I use some old um, drawer poles from a from an old school desk just for the uh, sliding doors on the front which is really nice you don't actually need that you can just push it from the end but it just gives you a little bit a bit more ease of use what I'm trying to do though is find this um, section I can find a, an F sort of section just like a single one of these um, which could work you just had the doors meeting in the center but um, this is 25 millimeters it's got this little web on the side and then this dual channel and the channel size for six millimeter glaze and I've got five mil on there so it just slides in perfectly 
but alternatively you could just use a, a flat strip of aluminium now i even thought about using like a very um industrial um double-sided tape you could actually screw the um or bond the uh, the aluminium draw runners onto that but um i'm sure you'll be able to find it but I, yeah i could source the the um single it's like an f it's like a capital letter f you've got the, the, the sort of prongs sticking out there and then the upright part of the f there but then you just have two doors and you just have to slide them to the ends which isn't quite as convenient but you could easily slide one door out completely and then the other one you could just slide back to give you access that way but um that's just one of these things when you when you design anything you've got to sort of source materials and um on this one i've got the i think this was 16 millimeters by three millimeter flat um, aluminium strip and that's about um i don't know about seven pound a meter or something like that so i've got to work out how much i need um i was thinking of using these as little alpine houses as well just taking out the glazing completely and um, if you take the glazing out you need the little cross braces to, to make it rigid but even with the glazing in there it just makes it really really sturdy and it keeps it nice and square it doesn't kind of rack and slide sideways and um this was old um science laboratory benches from a school as well that's old hardwood Iroko that I've sort of repurposed and that when it weathers it goes a nice sort of silvery grey colour it's very durable and what I like about that is um, to accommodate larger pots and deeper pots you can actually get another one of these and then stack it up two tiers or three tiers and it gives you that more much more headroom and um, I've got some aluminium um, toggle clips and I was thinking about fixing some of those on together so I can kind of lift that up as, as one single unit then it, it stops it sort of moving but they're, they're quite weighty anyway but I think having that if it was a storm or something it would, would secure it and I was also thinking about putting those little clips on here just to secure the end panels the one thing I've got to make a modification to these two Western Elliot clips um, this piece here it's just held down by this this wing nut here and this is a machine screw that runs through it's not a coach bolt so it hasn't got a square head so when you turn it it just rotates the whole thing so i wanted to file out the hole in the base of that aluminium tube so it's a square hole i'll get a coach bolt through there and then i'll make some more of these aluminium kind of uh, fabricated pieces and i'll put a slot in there so i can slacken that off slide this out it makes it easier to get the end panel off and then when you put the end panel back you can push it back so it's it's hard up against that and then tighten it up when i made these bases um i put these stainless steel um little sort of uh, hooks on here and i was thinking about just having a bungee over to that top bit just to secure that but since since i've i've put those on i've, I've made this sort of um, extension piece to give it that more height so it's more like a kind of greenhouse rather than a cloche but if you if you can find a, a laser cut is uh, local to you, I'd really recommend um, just popping in and having a chat and seeing if they've got a scrap bin, because the the cost of acrylic is um, they pay I think about seven hundred pounds to get a skip of this stuff recycled and it's shipped off. I don't know where it goes. It probably goes somewhere like Germany, and then they repurpose it. And then I don't know if it's sold as a, it wouldn't be sold as a virgin grade material. It might might be a slightly lower quality acrylic. But the thing is, this is, um, I think their laser cutter machines are about six meters by three millimeters, <laughs> six meters by three meters bedsides. So, so they're massive. And um, I think the acrylic sheet comes in about um, three by two meters. And they, they sit these big sheets on this machine and it's got like a, a cellophane um, protector on it as well. It's all brand new acrylic and the offcuts as well they're just laser cuts so sometimes it comes with almost like a flame polished nice sort of square edges and if you just run it for a saw and um, what i did here is i cut it um five mil oversize or no, three millimeter is oversized and then i just ran it for a router table and then i just routed these these edges as well so it's got a got a lovely um finish on there as well if you use a circular saw you can use a fine sort of tooth blade but it tends to chip the acrylic and um it's, it's just a an extra little process to run through but just make sure it makes it really clean and um, you get nice square cuts and also to to run them through the saw um i just use the the fence on the um saw to to, to run them to rip them through to sort of um the width but to cut them to length i i used a, a, a sliding like a t-square that's set up for a circular saw to give you like a kind of um track saw 
but I just used that with a bearing guided um, router bit and I ran the router bit on that that T sort of square and then routed these over size and then shifted it along and then just routed them so these are perfectly square as well so it's as square as the um, as that that um, T square is to, to when you when you make it to start with but yeah I'm really impressed by these and on a, on a sunny day it's 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 a really lovely little grow space and uh, it gives you the sort of um, use of a, of a greenhouse but with fraction of the cost but then incredible sorts of um, mobility and um, practicality as well because these things can be, be shifted around if you start some seeds in the ground you can actually lift the whole cloche off and put it on there so this is really just sort of doubling up as a as a compost bin lid but um i made these little clips these are temporary measure i've actually i'm going to order some aluminium channel and i'm going to use um a industrial um foam double-sided tape i'm going to glue the channels onto the tops here and then the channel is going to form a gutter I'll, I'll modify the corners here so that that channel extends slightly and then i was thinking of using a 40 millimeters um, black uh, upvc waste pipe that's been cut into two so it's like a semicircle like it gives you that gutter sort of section and then i was thinking of using some sort of stop ends as well solvent welding them to the, the pvc so i'll make a gutter channel and then maybe a, a piece of 25 millimeter black conduit bonded in there and so then that that forms a little downpipe and then i'll just use there was some screw holes in this one i'm going to make a kind of um pipe saddle clip so that hold a guttering on there the downpipe will feed into the the capillary trays that are underneath the the seed trays so then it will have sort of um rainwater harvesting as well and it will give you that rainwater to, to irrigate the the plants that are inside and any overflow i could um just uh, either harvest that or collect that in a water butt or alternatively just run it into the compost bin just to maintain a little bit moisture in the, in the bin um but that's just a sort of a, an additional kind of detail really that's not important but i think it's a it's a nice thing to have uh, and the other thing as well it's quite a sunny location here so i was going to put a 12 volt solar panel just a small one and run an air pump and then run the silicon hoses just down into the capillary trays just so the water's um, oxygenated so it stops it from from going kind of uh, anaerobic and i've got some sweet corn peas broad beans tomatoes chilies basil and i've got some courgette plants and some squash plants but i've taken them out to give them a bit bit more sun but yeah really pleased with this thing and um as the critic becomes available i think i'll make make more of these just give you that flexibility but even on a, a compost bin roof uh, something like this is a is a, is a nice way of, of harvesting rainwater but also giving you that uh, additional growth space and i think it looks really good as well so it's uh, it's all multi-purpose multi-use so thanks for watching as this develops, um, as I fit the, the guttering and the, the downpipes and things and the, the oxygenator, I'll just post, post an update. But well, that's all for now.